Greetings, bulls and bears, and everyone else in the animal kingdom. Can I get a courtesy laugh? Can I get an LOL down in comments, please? Yes, I'm a failed comedian, but I'm obsessive about bringing you the financial news. I've got a news roundup today covering the most important topics that we need to keep an eye on here in the U.S. and abroad. And we're going to talk about what's happening abroad and what's likely going to be coming here to the U.S. And most of you that have been on this channel know that just about everything that we've talked about here has played out really close or even exactly like we've described. We told you prices weren't going to come down even during the big shutdowns. We told you to prepare for rising prices because of lots of different factors all adding together to create this perfect storm of economic conditions leading to higher prices. And now you throw in a lot of people that just do not want to go to work. And that's a loaded topic right there, but there's a lot of underlying reasons. We've covered most of them here on this channel. And you're going to see more labor shortages, more goods supplies shortages, and rising prices. Get ready because this is just getting started. And yes, Costco is out there again, warning about delays for certain products and items. And here is a recent tweet, looks like from a shopper. There wasn't any bottled water packs or toilet paper at Costco today. Sign of the times to come. All right, does anyone know if we're opening up a bunch of new water factories for bottled water or toilet paper? Or are we shipping these items in to the United States? I'll let you take a guess at that one. And yes, there are some companies in the United States making these things, but guess what? With all of the other disruptions, with the labor force, with the shipping, the rising costs, and add on top of that the panic that a lot of people are rightfully uh, engaging in right now and, and shopping for these items, uh, expect more shortages and more rising prices. All right, next, a recent article here out of Slate. Cutting off unemployment benefits didn't fix the economy, it turns out. So they're pointing to some states that cut off unemployment benefits. Um, a lot of those states did see some job growth, but look at the headline here. Did it fix the economy? Of course it didn't. Uh, there's a lot more problems with the economy besides just unemployment benefits. Uh, we've talked about here that unemployment benefits were likely one of the factors, not the only factor, but one of the factors why some people, not all people, but some people were choosing not to go to work. But that's also a loaded topic. You've got the uh, health crisis issue. Uh, people concerned about being sick. Uh, the homeschooling. A lot of kids are still out of school because of the situation and people can't find uh, daycare or someone to homeschool their kids. So a lot of parents can't go to work and take a job. Um, so it's a lot more than just unemployment benefits. So for this article to come out and say that uh, cutting these benefits off didn't fix the economy, I think that's the ultimate uh, Captain Obvious statement, right? Cutting off unemployment benefits is not even going to scratch the surface of fixing all the problems with this economy. And in fact, some people would say it makes it worse because the extra unemployment benefits gave people money to go spend. And what happens when you spend money? Well, that creates jobs. The more people with more money to spend, the more demand there's going to be, and that's more jobs. You see how this works? So that's how they were able to keep this whole economic system rolling even during the worst economic situation in many, many decades and the highest unemployment in many, many decades. Now, on that topic, um, a lot of you may know that I often ask for people to send me good news. And I look down in comments and look for the links and I check my email and I didn't really get many replies. I wonder why. Uh, but I did get one reply and you're not going to believe this. Somebody pointed to the five something percent unemployment number. So obviously that person hasn't watched many of the videos here on this channel. If you still believe the official numbers that are coming out of the uh, quote unquote leaders and the bankers that run the country, um, you are uh, maybe seven years old. I mean, I don't know how many youth watch this channel, how many kids or um, toddlers maybe even watching this channel, but for you to believe the official number or any of the numbers that are coming out here. Now, of course, we look at the numbers so we can pick them apart. 
But if you want to get, uh, to get into the real number, it's closer to 25% unemployment when you look at working age individuals. All right, let's talk about the recent Fed meeting. We missed this last week, and it's really not news. I mean, I don't think anyone expected the Fed to raise rates, even though they're saying that there is a recovery. And the unemployment rate, yeah, that, that unemployment rate that we just talked about a few minutes ago, the unemployment rate is dropping, but yet we still cannot raise interest rates, even a fraction of a percent. Don't listen to what they say. Watch what they do. Why are they not raising rates? If the economy is so strong, let's raise interest rates and maybe give some people a reason to deposit money into financial institutions besides just paying bills and maybe can people can make some interest on their money. But no, savers are going to continue to get punished. And if you save your money, uh, you're getting eaten up by inflation. Yes, I am in about 50% cash myself, uh, but that's because I want to be prepared if and when there is a drop. And I'm talking about a deflationary collapse. Um, would I want to be all in cash? No, because you've got to hedge against inflation. My favorite way to do that is, is silver. I've got some stocks also, some other digital assets. But I've been buying silver way more heavily now since the drop down to the $22 range. Um, I think most of you know when it ran up to $26, $27, $28, I said I was pulling back on my silver purchases. And I was going to wait for a bit of a correction. And I do believe this is a correction on the way to newer all-time highs um, in silver. So yes, Fed, 0%, no rate hikes. They're saying 2022. Does anyone here actually think that we're going to see this big improvement in the economy with everything happening right now? We're going to see such a big improvement that we're going to be able to raise rates in 2022. You see, they have to put that out there. They have to say that. Otherwise, everyone would maybe realize what's going on. So how would it sound if the Fed says, yes, there is this great recovery. Unemployment is dropping, but we're never going to raise rates again. Wouldn't that be even too obvious for even the numbskulls to not notice? Maybe not. Now, let's talk about Will the end of the everything bubble be happening or be coming very soon? This is out of birchgold.com. Evergrande contagion threatens to collapse the everything bubble. And let's go to the last paragraph of this article. And please comment down below what you think about this if you agree with this. Here it is. At some point in the near future, constant interventions by the Fed and Treasury won't be able to stave off a major crisis. Stimulus must eventually dry up and the Fed can only print money for so long before the dollar becomes worthless. If they decide to taper the relentless flood of easy money, markets could panic. And as we can see from the cursory glance at the Evergrande situation, the fragile state of the U.S. economy just can't withstand any shocks. And they go on to talk about protecting yourself with precious metal. Now... Just because there's rising prices and inflation, and in some cases runaway inflation, doesn't mean that the dollar is dead. Remember, the, the dollar is being compared to other fiat currencies, other baseless, uh, mostly digital currencies. So the dollar can look strong compared to other currencies, but when you look at the purchasing power, then yes, the dollar's value is eroding, but not just because of the printing, we also have the supply issues, the lack of manufacturing issues, uh, things that would take a long time to actually get corrected, uh, but nothing's being done to even begin correcting those. So expect further deterioration. Do I agree with the headline? Yes. Prepare for the possible storm. And it's not just the possible storm. The storm is here. Uh, we're just at the beginning. So far, we just see the lightnings, the, the, the lightning, the dark clouds. You hear some thunder in the distance. Uh, but we're just at the beginning of the storm, people. So uh, keep stacking, keep preparing, stay well, stay safe, stay prepared, stay positive. Until next time, thanks for being here. Peace.